the skill tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Now this week, I'm traveling for work. As such, I don't have a whole lot of time to actually make a thing like I normally would. So I thought it might be fun for you and I to just sit and have a bit of a conversation instead. Specifically about the process of actually planning out a project. At this point, I've done hundreds of projects on this show and I don't think I've ever gone over how I like from the beginning portions of where I get the idea from all the way down to actually making the thing and everything in between. It's honestly such a giant part of the process and thus a part of this show and I've never actually explained it to you before. And since the vast majority of the audience watching this are fellow crafters, I thought it would be fun to kind of like show how that's done and how I get into things. Maybe it'll help your process, or maybe you'll see a flaw in my process and leave it in the comment section below. So pull up a chair and a sketchbook and let's learn how we go about making something fun. To show off how this process works, I'm actually going to be walking you through one of the last projects I did here, which is this badass like Bard Scribes kit. I love this thing so much. But it very much followed the entire process I'm going to be talking about. It'll also help me talk about the three like major pitfalls that I always have to deal with while I'm doing this. Starting with the first one is where to start like what is your muse what brings this idea to the surface how do you get the inspiration for what you want to do sometimes it fulfills a need right like you have a, a costume or you have some kind of a project that you need to make and that's pretty cut and dry what you're going to do like the big overarching what this project is and some of it just kind of has to come from your dome piece out of whole cloth and that is hard, but I can tell you as somebody who has to do it literally every week, it can be done. You can force yourself into this kind of, you know, creative state. You just have to find the right thing. For some people, it's like listening to a particular kind of music or doing another task while you mull it over. For me, it's the partnership I have with Maddie. We like have our meetings and we'll have a drink and we'll goof off and talk about projects we think would be cool. Usually while we're looking at like Pinterest or Etsy or scenes from a cool video game. Heck, some of our ideas just come from like magic items in like the D&D manual. And we're like, what would that look like to really make it? See the bag of incredible expansion here. Now the main starting point for this project was actually this outfit I got from Bergsnyder to go to Comic-Con with. This is their bard kit and it looks so good. So I really wanted to do an episode around this particular piece of kit. The problem is I had no idea what to do. Like I wasn't sure if I wanted to try and add extra flavor to the outfit itself, like weathering it, adding parts where like maybe he got into a fight or something like that. Or perhaps him being a bard, I want to make some kind of an instrument. But then while Maddie and I were making up characters for this event, I decided it would be cool if the bard didn't use music or whatever to cast his spells, but instead used stories weaving this intricate tapestry while he casts his spell. And that was like the first breadcrumb on the trail of making this thing. I knew whatever I did, I'd want to have that theming, that kind of like, all right, he's a, a character in a D&D world, and his main thing he does is he writes. Now from there, the original crux of the episode was going to be doing a whole bunch of different things for him. Like I was going to take some of those pen nibs that are in here and maybe make like a little pen nib earring, make a tiny little decorative like metal quill and have that be a pin, almost like the Harper's pin, right? Like he belongs to some kind of an organization. And this, this was supposed to be just kind of a simple piece of leather folded in on itself to hold my book by my side. Which, by the way, the initial design came from a couple of Pinterest searches that had something similar for how someone holds their book on their side. Which, once I had kind of that ideation, that, that initial seed of a thought, it goes on to the next phase, which is kind of the planning phase. This is where I draw stuff down, or Maddie and I kind of throw stuff back and forth and be like, oh, it'd be really cool if it did this thing, or maybe he has this type of, you know, if you're making the earring, it could look like this. And that, by the way, is where, like, these things, the little field notebooks, are just so money for me. You don't have to buy this. You can draw in whatever you want. But just getting whatever is in your brain down where you can actually see it and kind of play with it just makes all the difference in the world, at least for me. And these do not have to be good. You don't have to be a good artist to do this. Like, check out some of the past projects that are in this particular book. Like, this one here is for my expandable travel vanity for camping. Kind of vague and not explanatory, but it at least puts it there so I can have a look at it. Which, by the way, if you want to see how that came out, check out this episode right here. And then for this one in particular, I just made a couple of sketches on how I thought it could go together. Which part of this and part of kind of the last step, and honestly, it'll carry us through the whole thing, um, comes in for me in this project in this step. 
Because on one side of it, I had a very simple design, kind of like I showed you from, you know, Pinterest or whatever. That was basically going to be just a piece of leather that folded all the way around and back on itself and just kind of closed that way. And that's it. It was just going to hold the book and nothing else. But then I got excited about it. And that is the magic sauce as far as I'm concerned, is this excitement that you, you get your idea and you hold on to it and you're like, oh, you know what would be, you know what would be really cool? What if I, what if I made it so that it like opened up and everything you needed on it? And he's a D&D &D character, so if he's using this to cast a spell, he'd have to be able to like get his book out and his writing implement out fast. So how would I do that? How would I make like a quick draw scribes kit basically? And once I had that idea, that one that really grabbed me, all of the other little ideas that were gonna be in the episode had to go by the wayside. I had to devote everything to this, this one project because I was excited about it. Funny story too, um, Maddie's job, one of her largest jobs on this show is to keep me excited about things. I have a raging case of ADHD and if I lose the thread on something or if I lose excitement about the project I'm doing, I almost physically can't make myself do it. My brain does not want to focus on it anymore. I will walk away and do something else. In fact, there was one project that I was trying to work on before and like I just I wasn't in it anymore and then I noticed that the little mouthpiece on my pipe didn't look good. I didn't like how the wood was getting chewed up. So I grabbed a piece of bone and I made a whole bone mouthpiece carving it out and making it look great and fitting it. None of which I caught on camera and none of which was useful to me. <laughs> But I loved it and I still love it, great. All that to say, this process should be fun. You should be kind of in love with the thing you're making because that's gonna show as you make it. That love is gonna kind of go into it. And during this stage, the planning stage, is when you get to get excited and super creative. Like once I decided I wanted it to be that kind of quick draw thing, like planning how this could, how all of this would sit in it and how I can hide it away and, and have it just kind of protected. Like that was fun to do. It was fun to draw this all out and figure out how it all fits together. Okay, so you have your idea and you have the rough plan on how to put it together. Which by the way, there are two kind of schools of thought. You could either be somebody who crazy over plans exactly how it's gonna go together, or you get a pretty rough idea and you just kind of go with it. I tend to sit squarely in the middle and that's because I tend to have the problem of like super over planning. If I don't physically push myself away from it, I will sit and plan a thing, decide what I planned on was stupid, scrap it, replan it, super over engineer it, decide it's over engineered and start over. And that is my kind of second deadly sin of, of crafting is the analysis paralysis. Avoid it as much as possible. It is awesome to get it all down on paper and plan it out so you know what materials to buy and stuff like that's fantastic. But at a certain point, you have to start. Don't don't just keep planning it. Sure, some of the stuff isn't gonna work out and you're gonna find out in the middle of it, but you will adjust and the thing you come out with is gonna be better, I promise you. And it's gonna work because it's not on paper anymore and when rubber hits the road, you're gonna make it work. So that brings me to my next one, which is the materials. How are you gonna make this thing? What, what are you gonna make it out of? And that really comes down to understanding what a material is capable of and what it's, it's not. So for example, for this, I needed something that was pliable enough to kind of make this shape and hang on, on to me. Fairly easy to color. I mean, leather just kind of fit the bill. It was perfect for it. But this little portion inside out of wood, that was originally going to be another piece of leather, something thicker so that it was more rigid and kind of hold everything in place. Unfortunately, when I started kind of playing with it and, and I cut out a little piece of leather to see how it would work, it wasn't rigid enough. I decided I probably would have to back it with some kind of a chipboard or something like to give it that rigidity I needed. So then I kind of thought to myself, well, is this the best material for this job? If I need something that is you know, uh, rigid, thin, because that, that thick piece of leather plus something backing it is gonna add a lot of bulk to it. Lightweight, like why would I go with a leather that I have to back somehow when I can get a pretty thin, super lightweight piece of wood that is exactly the kind of rigidity that I need. Same with like when it came to the grommets and stuff here. These grommets or whatever aren't made for wood necessarily. Same with the rapid rivets here. These all come from my leather kit, but I know what they do, right? I know that they fasten things together by kind of you smash onto it and it mushrooms out. So as long as I make a hole it'll fit into and the shank is big enough to kind of cover through the thickness of the material, 
it should work. There's no reason it shouldn't work. So yeah, just knowing what your things do and what you need to do the job. Like for my expandable vanity there, like it was gonna be a lot of hinges. I needed the hinges, but they couldn't be too big. I didn't want them too small or dinky, so they break. So just understanding what you're looking for and what your project needs to do and what type of materials can handle that thing it needs to do. And then hand in hand with that is knowing your tools. Do you have the tools you need to do this job? And I can test that you can get most things done with really basic hand tools, but you still need them. Do you have them? And though you can be creative with the types of tools you use for the job, you don't need the exact tool for the job, having the right tool for the job really does make all the difference in the world. Now tell me if you're interested, by the way, in me making a, um, like my favorite tools for my workshop or for like leather crafting or whatever video. I think that would be kind of fun. All right, moving on from there. So I have kind of the understanding of what type of materials I'm gonna have, the idea of how it's gonna go together. This phase is optional, this next one, but I recommend it for more complex projects and that is the testing phase. Getting another material, be it paper or foam or cardboard is fantastic for this. And putting all the project together with the dimensions you have and, and all of that um, without really expending your nicer material. Now this is especially great for bigger projects like armor where you've kind of designed everything out of paper first and you put it together and then you realize like, oh, I need to come over like three inches here to cover up more. Well, you can just bust out some masking tape, add some paper on, and now you know you have your measurements. Everything works when you put it on paper. Once it actually becomes a physical object, you're going to find a bunch of little things that you're like, wow, I'm glad I tested that out. That would have left me on the wrong foot. Though, like I said, it is optional. For something as simple as this project, it was just kind of a piece of leather that wrapped around. I didn't bother to template it out. There really isn't a lot measurement-wise that can go wrong. It's more kind of like the straps and how everything fits together cleanly that I had trouble with. And mostly with the board, which I had plenty of extra wood kicking around over here, so I wasn't too worried about it. But yeah, if you have like precious material you don't want to waste or have the extra expense, I definitely recommend you, you templating everything first and trying it out. And this leads me to my second to last point here, which is staying open. Being like you might have a plan and you love your plan, but then once you start making it, something else kind of going back to the beginning some other muse is going to kick in your head and be like no it'd be even cooler with this thing though if we did this instead that's kind of on this one where these grommets came from in this lacing here like i needed something to close this space off so the book didn't just kind of fall out but i was just going to put another strap o leather or like have things come around and buckle to keep it shut but then i thought if i just laced up those sides then if i put a bigger book in there it can open up a little bit more and then i just retie it uh, with that bigger space like that is much more functional to me and that that was great I love that so I, I readjusted I it added a little bit more work but it's a better thing for that and I love how it came out and almost every one of my projects there's a moment of that there's a moment where I have to stop and be like ooh, I could keep going with this and it's definitely the easier route or I could go this way that is way more cool and I'm gonna love so much more and I I always go that route it's it's too too Maddie's everlasting consternation. I'm like, ooh, the video's gonna be a little bit late, but I'm gonna be doing something way more cool. <laughs> Which does lead me to my very last point and the third of the deadly sins is just knowing when to stop. I am a card carrying perfectionist. I would sit and keep making th th the same thing and refining it forever. It is never perfect to me. Aside from the fact that like I made it and I love it, like it's perfect in that regard, but everything to me is like in process to a better design. This one, for example, like he is a bard that is going to be out in the world adventuring. There should be something to cover this, no? It's gonna rain, it's good like it, this, his book is gonna get damaged. But that leads me down a whole other rabbit trail. Like I don't wanna add a lot of bulk to it. So it, it have to be something that either I can clip on secondarily and kind of put over it, or maybe somehow like stay on the back when you don't need it and then flip over these little ears here to close off, which then can lead me down a thousand other rabbit trails. Like, do I wanna put something on that? Maybe there's a little inner pocket on that flap so that I can put other stuff in it. How does it connect once it's closed so it's not just flapping around in the wind? Like at a certain point, you have to look at it and go, I'm. I'm done, this is okay. For me, it's a lot easier because I have a deadline. I have to get the thing done because I have to show it to you. And there's only so much time I can fiddle around before I need to move on to the next project. 
But just like at the beginning, analysis paralysis can kill you in this step and you can just work on the thing forever until you've kind of ruined what your initial thought was and, and over-engineered the thing till it's just kind of a hot mess. So that's my process in a nutshell. I do it often. I can tell you it's the nature of this particular YouTube beast because I have to dish these things out all the time. And this is the process that works for me. That being said, everybody's creative process is going to be different. So I'm really curious to find out what your creative process is. Or if you've never really thought of it before, are there some steps in here or some tips that you found helpful too? Any of that, please leave in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear kind of what you guys have to say on this topic. Now, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime, good luck with your projects. And as always, keep leveling up, you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon skill monkeys, and we cannot do this show without them. Their generous giving is really what makes us able to do this and get the materials we need to make these projects. If you'd like to join their noble ranks, consider joining our Patreon. Link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos here, and that helps us out too. I'll just sit here and drink and ponder my next project while you choose. Cheers.